Hello everyone. Uh, happy Tuesday afternoon. It is raining, so we'll see if it gets loud again. I've sort of waited for the heavy rain to stop, so hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully it doesn't get too heavy. Uh, fair warning, I do have my four-year-old with me and my one-year-old. Uh, one-year-old's asleep, four-year-old's bouncing around watching TV, so we'll see how we go. Um, there's not a lot going on today, but we're starting our next piece. So, sorry, there's like a little bug flying around there. It's on the camera. <laughs> um, we're starting our next piece, which is this gorgeous sideboard. And if you watched my couple of little reels yesterday, I had a couple of really um, quick... Sorry, my doorbell's ringing at home, apparently. My husband can get that. Um, I posted, yeah, one reel yesterday, one quick little short video yesterday, and one again today. And if you saw that, you would have seen me tearing the back off this piece, knocking the shelves out, um, and then today stapling and filling all the holes. Um, and then I've also done a quick video showing me sanding as well, but I haven't posted that yet. Stay away from Harry. Come on, be good girl. Um, sorry, parenting at the same time. Um, so, it doesn't have a back on it at the moment. It doesn't have shelves on it at the moment, uh, mainly because it's raining and I'm gonna need the trailer to go and get the wood. Uh, so I need a bit of ply for the back um, and some thicker ply. So we use a nice thin, normally around, um, I think it's 12 mil for the back. And then um, when I normally, I go for a thicker ply for the shelves generally, or an MDF, depending on the size that I need and the price point. So that will be, at some point. I will show you, I might do a video again showing, I did show the cutting of like putting a new back on um, a few weeks ago, but I might do showing the shelves as well and how I do that. It's really quite easy. Once you pull the back off a piece, it's fairly easy. Unfortunately, this piece, um, one entire side was coming off. There was not much holding it in at all. It was a miracle that it hadn't fallen apart. Um, and when I took the back off, it all just sort of started to fall apart. The shelves, unfortunately, because all of the supports down one side um, that the shelves sit on, they had all come away. And because they'd come away, obviously there'd been weight on the shelves over the years. Um, and at some point, and it's been, somebody's tried to repair it multiple times by the looks of it. As those supports have come away, those shelves um, have been cracked and they've just, um, they've cracked in multiple places. There was no, fixing them. Somebody had stuck a wallpaper down to them, uh, which I'm a sh like at best guess is what's held it together as long as it has been. But once I started to peel that wallpaper off, I realized how significant the cracking was. So um, inside right now, because it's been raining and because I haven't been to Bunnings, is, hang on, I can't open it now. Oh, finger. There's nothing in there at all. <laughs> So no shelves, I've still got to put one support back on, but there's no shelves, no back, there's nothing at all happening in here. Um, but that's not a big deal, because we can start on the outside while we're waiting for the inside. Um, I was going to be starting a bedroom set this week, but we have a workshop on Sunday, and I've still got a couple of spots left too. I've got three people booked, so for those who are local, it's 10 till two on Sunday, this coming Sunday, I think it's the 25th of August. Um, 150 bucks gets you a seat at the table and uh, we go prep, painting and finishing on the day. Um, anyway, we've got a workshop so I didn't want to start the bedroom set because it's a dresser uh, which is about the same size as this and then two bedside tables. It's a lot of drawers. Once something goes on the table, I don't want to be taking it on and off so I just decided let's get this done, get it out of the road. Um, plus, I want to have some fun. I am so bored. You guys have seen we've done grey, we've done uh, what else have we done? We've done an awful lot of grey. Uh, we've done a few restorations, etc. But I'm itching for some colour and I'm itching for some fun. So this is it. Uh, it had quite a lot of damage on the outside as, as well. You can see I've got quite a bit of filler on it. I have sanded it. Um, the drawers had quite a lot of um, damage as well. I'm not looking for this to be perfect, but we just want it 90% there. Um, so let me show you the colors that I'm thinking and the plan. There is a plan. So I've pretty much gone through my shelf. I 
I grabbed all of my greens, but I'm thinking a little bit rustic, chippy, a lot of texture, um, and green. That's my plan. Sounds good, doesn't it? So I've grabbed just what I've got on my shelf. I figured like, this is a great opportunity to use up some paint. So I've got Rainforest. Uh, so normally for something like this, I would normally use chalk finish for a real rustic chippy piece, but I've got all these greens open in silk. So we're gonna use silk. Um, I do have some chalk paint, which I'll show you in a second, but silk, you can achieve this look as well. So I thought it was a good opportunity to also show that side of this paint. You can do anything with it. Uh, we've got fern, which, and I'm thinking this is gonna be my main color. We've got a vineyard, which you guys know, I use this a lot. I've got acacia as well, which is, quarter is it a quarter strength of that so we've got myrtle in the middle vineyards are double strength acacias a half strength of myrtle um so i've got acacia i don't have it here on my table but i do have it and then i've also got this is a custom blend oh with our camera this is a custom blend that we did a little while ago are you right bubba do you want to go to dad no okay She's catching raindrops with her spoon. Um, this is gum nut, sugar cane, fern, eucalypt, and fossil. It was like my little pour everything in and see what you come up with pot. And then I've also got this. I don't know how much is left in this. I don't think there's much. This is called Wilderness. It's in an old Tenico. This is probably four years old. Yeah, about, yeah, it'd be about four years old. Um, but got it I need to use it up it's a darker green it's quite a nice green as well it's very similar it's darker than vineyard but sort of similar tonage so I'm thinking let's use it up why not so that's what we've got and then I've also grabbed out I'm not saying that we will use every single one of these colors but um we'll have a play around see what we come up with I also grabbed some burnt sienna I grabbed, uh, I think it's Vivian or something, I don't know, and yellow okra as well, because sometimes it's nice to sort of mix it up a little bit too. So that's what we've got going on now. But before we put any color on this, we need to prime it. So because we're using silk as our primary paint, we do have to, okay, whatever's up in the time. Um, because we're using silk, we have to do our prep work. If I was using chalk only, I wouldn't necessarily prime. I would just go in straight with my paint. Chalk sticks really well to just about anything. It doesn't stick to everything, but just about to anything. Um, this, with a scruff sand, chalk would be fine on this. Uh, it's got quite a lot of texture already, um, so it wouldn't, wouldn't be an issue. Whereas silk, just prime it's just easier it guarantees your finish and it makes sure that that paint isn't going anywhere um silk definitely needs a little bit more help to adhere but once it's got that help it's normally pretty good it's not going to go anywhere so we're going to prime this today i'm going to give this a quick wipe down i have vacuumed it hang on where's my there it is lost my cloth that's not the cloth that i want hang on I have vacuumed it off after I sanded it, but we're just going to give it a quick wipe down just to wipe the dust off. So I just sanded this with my electric sander just because of the sheer amount of, um, what do you call it, of filler that I had on this. It wasn't too bad. The main thing is that this drawer had quite a lot of damage. Um, it had the handles that were on it were... These ones, oh sorry, these ones here, they're really nice, they're not the original handles. They are really nice, um, but I feel like they're not really the style of the piece, so I filled the holes. Um, I have, I found my box of like all my miscellaneous handles earlier, so I might, we'll get some colour on it and then we'll go through our options and sort of pick what the best choice is. I just feel like these, for the look that we're going for, aren't right. So I've just chucked them in a bag. I don't have any Ziploc bags here, apparently. So I've chucked it in a little bag and that's now going on my stash. 
Um, screws as well. If the screws are fine, they're not um, rusted or broken, keep the screws for your handles. So, get this quick wipe down. And then we're going to prime it. So, we're going to prime with Purico Basin Blocker. Shh, um, Purico Basin Blocker. I have got. Um, comes in a grey. Why are you over there still? Come over here. Right. This makes more sense. Right, we've got a grey. Now I did find my tub of white, but while I was looking for colours, I actually found one. This was a white that I've mixed to make it into a grey. Um, so we're going to use that. I think we'll use what's left in this as well if we need to. But I think we'll just use that and see how we go. Now, the fun part of this is we're going to add some texture to our basin blocker. Uh, using Pure Eco's texture finish. So I don't want a massive amount of texture, but I just want a little bit. Um, this is pretty textured already, but I just wanted something to be different. Sometimes you want a little bit of texture. So this is Pure Eco's texture finish. It is a really, really fine powder, um, similar to like, uh, baby powder sort of texture um, and you can use this you can put it in silk finish but it doesn't work as well it works really really well in basin blocker and it works amazing in chalk finish the self leveling properties of silk finish sort of stops it from working as well as what we want but it does work really really well in basin blocker so we're gonna put some of this in this that's the plan so first of all Throw your brush away. Get your jars open because <laughs> I'm not that prepared. Oh. You'd think I'd know by now just to have everything ready to go, but here we are. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't think I've added any links today, but because I forgot. Uh, oh my god, maybe we aren't using this. I can't open it. Uh, our YouTube. I've been really, really busy behind the scenes getting all of our videos uploaded. Uh, so the six draw dresses up, um, the restoration that we did the other day on that little dresser is up. Um, our staging video is up as well. There's a couple others. Or if they're not up, they'll be up. Oh my gosh, I can't open that at all. What? Got it. Okay, whatever, that's fine. Okay, what she's doing. I have no idea. Tuesdays is the only day she's not at kinder. There we go. Right, so this was white and I mixed carbon with it and made grey. So, what we're going to do... Fabulous. Off you go, please. Good girl. Mummy's trying to do this. Good girl. Let's grab my paintbrush again. Okay, so roll up these sleeves because they are too long and they drive me nuts today. I'm going to put our basin block onto our doors first. So I'm going to put it where I want it really flat and not too much texture. I'm going to paint it straight from the jar first. Then we're going to mix our, te our texture finish into our basin blocker for the rest. So we're just going to come in first. Turn you around, turn you down. Uh, this is our 50ml brush, as you can see, very well used. So it's a little bit darker than what your average grey basin blocker is, but that's it's fine for what we're doing. So I've just got these panels. I don't want to add too much extra texture to these. Um, they've already got quite a lot. So we're just going to pop our basin blocker on these first. I'm not too fussed about getting the basin blocker like into every single nook and cranny. The biggest thing I'm looking for is not to have any big drips or clumps of paint. Like so. So I just, because these have already carved, they've got extra texture in the background. I, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's like 
little divots all over the background of it. So I just don't want to add too much extra to there. I'm going to do the same on the other door. There we go, so you can see what we're doing. So same over here. So I just scruff sanded this too. I think I already said that, but scruff sanded. I just used my electric sander and went all over the whole thing. Um, I haven't sanded the very top yet either. Uh, because of the rain, mainly, I will, as soon as it's not raining, we'll take this outside and I will strip the top properly. I, um, I just don't like to do that really, really heavy sanding inside. It's a bit too much dust. This, what I did today, was enough dust for me. Any more than that, it, it gets way too much inside. So again, just making sure that there's no like big clumps of paint or drips. Not too fast about getting it into every nook and cranny. And again, just brushing it on. Now your base and blocker, as always, it does not have to be a perfect coat. It can look like that, that's fine. Um, it does not have to be perfect coverage. We're not looking for perfect coverage um, with our base and blocker. You just want to get it on there. Now that we've done that, hmm, let's add some texture now. So what I'm gonna do first though, this is really, really quite thick. I'm actually gonna thin it just a touch, um, just to help it spread a little bit better. Um, which is easier said than done. Hang on three seconds. Right. So, I just got my kettle. This is just, it's, um, gosh, I reckon I used this, it's probably almost 12 months ago when I made this. Um, so it's just, it's just a little bit thick. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it, more just to thin the paint. Um, our texture finish is obviously going to thicken it again. But I just want to thin it out just a little bit. Grab yourself a spoon. Give it a quick stir as well. It's more as well, just so I can really scrape those edges. That's better. I was just feeling a little bit thick when I was painting it as well. So... Sometimes you can thin these with some water as well. So, well now it's just that little bit it's dying over there. Um, it's just thinned it just that little bit. All right, so we've done that, which really probably wasn't really worth it because we're now going to thicken it. But <laughs> why not show you that anyway? Now I'm thinking. Now I'm really thinking about it. My brain thought it was a good idea. It probably wasn't worth worthwhile doing all right so you're gonna grab your texture finish I'm not sure do I have any on the shelf do I, do I, do I? I did not I think I don't have any on the shelf I'm pretty sure I've got some ordered if I don't LJ I will be in touch and I will add it to this I've placed an order yesterday um, and some of it will be here I think Friday and the rest will be here in the next week or so um, and we're pretty much restocking almost everything. All of, nearly all of silk finish. Um, our top coats, our staining glazes, our basin blockers, all the really important stuff that you guys really, really love is all finally restocked properly, uh, which I'm really, really excited about. So, texture finish. It's just like this powder. You can see it's really, really fine. <coughs> um, you don't need a lot. And... The amount that you add depends on how much texture you want. So you can thin your paint like I just have if you add too much of this. Uh, normally you would not put this straight into your paint jar like I'm about to do. Um, decant your paint and then do it. Obviously, I don't have much paint left in this jar. I'm happy to do this. So we're going to take, and this little scooper comes with it too. We're going to do like half a thing. I reckon this probably holds... It must hold just over a tablespoon. Maybe two? I don't know. LJ, if you're watching, can you confirm how much this holds? I've never actually measured it. I think it must be almost two tablespoons this little thing holds. Anyway, you're going to pop that in with your paint. And once it's in there, you're going to start stirring it. Now, this 
and putting it on yourself. Uh, this is going to thicken your paint and it's going to get, you see, it instantly becomes quite clumpy. And this is how you get that really cool texture. There's a lot of different products on the market that can do this. Um, but texture finish is really, really nice to use. So you just want to mix it to the point where, let me just turn it. So you can see, I don't mind a few clumps in it. I think that's fine. You just want to get it to the point where um, you don't really have, um, where it's like it's all mixed together. So you can't see your texture finish. I'm going to add a little bit more, try and get it in the jar, ideally. Going well today, aren't we? So again, there we go. It's a bit hard mixing backwards. <laughs> So you just want to mix it until you it's sort of combined. So you can't really see that texture in there anymore. Bit off the side. You can mix this as thick or thin as you like. So I think what we're going to do, so we're going to start with that consistency. We're going to do that on some of it. And then we'll come back and we might even make it a little bit thicker. And we can keep layering this as well. So you can have a lot of fun with it. Um, let me take that out move the powder out of the room so we don't spill it. Mm -hmm. So, and um, you can use your normal brushes. You don't have to use anything special. Now, as for the application, you can put it on any way you like. You can just brush it on. <coughs> you can do a little bit of a cross. You can dapple and really get a lot of texture in there. It's really up to you how you want to put this on. And I want this a bit thicker again. I don't think that's thick enough, so I'm just going to add like another almost full cupful. I'm not doing a very good, good job getting it into the thing today. I just want a little bit thicker, I think. That was probably a lot thicker, but <coughs> that's fine. All right. So you can see we're a lot thicker. So you just want it mixed enough that it's not, like you don't have to stand here and mix it for hours. You just want it enough so it's not, um, like it's, it's one sort of product. That's a lot thicker. I think that's a better consistency. We can make it thicker again if we need to. So you can do this sort of at any stage as well. If you uh, are using chalk, you can put this into the chalk and just use your basin blocker as normal as well. It is completely and entirely up to you at what stage you add your texture finish, okay? Um, you can also use this as a filler if you want to. Um, so you can mix it a lot thicker and then use it to fill any holes, etc. as well. Uh, it works really, really well. It dries really hard and it's a great option for that. So I'm just sort of brushing it on to begin with. Quite thick. I am being very generous, as you can see. And hang on, this drawer is just... Oh, come on, open. Tuck its way back into there. Why are you stuck? Don't mind me. Hang on two seconds. Okay. No longer stuck. Try not to get paint all over me today. So I'm just sort of brushing it on. That's better. And again, I'm not too fussed about... I will clean up the edges of the drawers later. Um, not fuss about getting it on the top, that's not an issue. Just want to get it on there for a second. It's quite thick, I'm being very generous. Now, 
I'm going to sort out in a few spots where I want a bit more texture. I'm just really gently going to sort of dapple a little bit. You can use a sponge as well. But this is a great way to sort of add add a bit more texture. I don't want it everywhere. And I don't mind a few brush strokes. Um, you can then uh, thin this down again with your sandpaper. So you don't have to keep it this thick. And just anywhere that I want a little bit more. I'm just going to come through. And we can still thicken this more as well. And I know that I want quite a lot down along the base. For a finish like this where I'm going to get quite chippy, quite rustic, um, I generally like to really make the bases look like they've been really well lived in. So a lot of extra texture down the bottom can really, really add to that look. And around handles as well, because that's where it's touched up here. And then we're going to enhance this with our... Um, glaze and our paint etc as well So it doesn't have to be everywhere, it can just be like a little dapple here and there, just to sort of build a little bit of texture. And I do want quite a bit down the bottom. You can sort of do it any way you like as well. You don't necessarily have to sort of dapple. But I find most of the time this gives me like that look that I'm really after. And even going in from the sign can sort of change it up a little bit. And bringing a little bit onto this, but I'm not looking for like a lot on our decorative bit. And anywhere where it sort of gets a bit much, I can sand back as well. Just going in a little bit thicker down the bottom. And when you're doing your dappling as well, keep changing your brush direction so it doesn't all look exactly the same. Sometimes that can look like it's a bit much. Something like that. Okay, so let's come over. Side number two. Possum, please don't touch those, darling. They're not yours. Uh, 148. That's right. We've got time. Alright. The same thing again here. So we're just going to brush it on first and then we're going to dapple it and get that texture built up. doing all the different sort of movements can really help 
get that texture looking really authentic as well and it doesn't all look exactly the same, which we do want to avoid. If we can, Harry's asleep. I'm mucking around. My husband's alright. So we're just going to be so brushing it on. Some places we want a little bit thicker. Okay, baby. She's rearranging my stock. Just what we need. <laughs> okay, just sort of building up that texture a little bit. And as your paint dries as well, you can keep really getting that texture where you need it to be. Why don't you go over to dad shit, huh? missing cloth. Uh, how's this looking? What? Oh, that's okay. I'll fix it in a minute. That's fine, darling. Don't go in the puddles. Okay, she says. She's going in the puddles. <laughs> Sometimes when you like snap a slap that side of the brush on, it can just look that little bit more. Let me bring you in a bit closer. See how it just looks, whereas if I do this, it looks a little bit more forced, whereas that looks a little bit more natural. And if we touch those bits that are sort of starting to dry a little bit, we can even take a little bit more product onto them too. And I really want more product down on the base. And we're going to come along, I think, and add some, um, what are we adding? Adding more texture as well in a few spots in a minute. So we're going to use up what we've got left here in my jar and then we're going to mix just a little bit more and make it a little bit thicker and get that little bit more in there. So we're going to come around the end. Here's our end. Let me move our scooter. 
and you can see we had some cracks we've got quite a lot of filling so anywhere where we've got a lot of um, filling or like things that we're sort of trying to hide we'll put a little bit more texture there because it will help hide it they're fine they're, it's like it's structurally sound again I've made sure of that but we don't necessarily want to see Sometimes, if, if I did a flat finish on this, you would see all of that. And we don't want to see it all. So sometimes these sort of finishes are brilliant just for sort of hiding, hiding some of that. We don't always want to see all of that. So I'm just sort of brushing this on first. Again, any direction is fine. Just getting it on there. I'm sort of going in any direction because I have thickened this. I just don't want like really obvious brush strokes. And that's why I'm painting like this. And then I'm gonna grab a big clump. Now I know I've got this big crack down here. Building up, I'm bringing what I did at the side around. Down here, where I know that I've got quite a bit of filler. As well, we've we'll grabbed some more out of my jar. I think when it comes to big flat surfaces like this, you just want to try and make it look like it's not just like plonked in the middle. So sometimes you do need to sort of go over it a little bit. I will probably sand this lightly as well. But for this, I think it looks better if we uh, sort of plobber it along all over. That was plobber. I don't think that's a word. So a little bit thicker in some places, other places probably not as much, but we still want a little bit of texture there as well. Again, bringing that really heavy texture that we had in a few sections around to the side like this. We've done quite a lot of texture on the bottom. I feel like corners down here, it's a really great place to get quite heavy because it's uh, that's where it's going to be kicked. It's going to be knocked. So let's add some more texture to that and then we'll add some glaze, we'll put our paint on, we'll strip it back, um, we're going to make it bubble. We're going to have a lot of fun with this piece. So it really doesn't matter what you do and where you do it, at the moment we're just sort of getting this foundation laid. And again just rotating my brush regularly so all my little splodginess isn't going in one direction. And we will sand this a little bit too, anywhere that it needs to be sanded, just to smooth it out again, like so. I want a little bit more just here. And you can get really, really heavy like that, or you can really thin that out too. You don't have to go. Uh, and you can even like flick it on. You can do whatever you want. Let's go down the other end. And then we wait for it to dry. So when you're putting your paint on, as thick as what we're doing today, um, you do need to really give it overnight, ideally, um, just to make sure, hang on, let me um, just make sure it's fully dry, okay? So we will come back tomorrow, tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, um, and we'll add our color tomorrow. So we'll do sort of two to three layers of our color again, same as what we normally do. Again, as you can see, I've got a lot of filler down my side here. Um, it's just where it's cracked over time and started to separate a little bit. I've just filled it in just enough that's not as obvious. So, she's walked off and the TV's still going, but now it's playing out. Hang on two seconds. Um, at the moment. So yes, anywhere where we've 
got like a lot of filler. We're just gonna add a little bit more texture to it. It's just gonna help hide that. Again, we're gonna bring around a lot of this really heavy texture that we had at the bottom here. As we're going, we can bring it around that side a bit too. And then the rest of that bit, sweeping a bit off the table here as well and off our spoon. Just gonna wipe it along the bottom and then we'll build that texture up a little bit more too. a lot of texture down the bottom here just to hide where this back was. It's all secured, all fixed, but we just don't want it super obvious. So we're going to add more product there. Just to hide those few bits. So we've got barely anything left in our jar now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in, I'm going to add a bit more of our texture finish and we're going to make this really thick. So I'm going to add, how much is left? There's not much. I'm going to have like half a cap in. And I'm going to put the lid on it this time before I spill it. Where do I put the lid? Oh no, the baby's awake. <laughs> It was not a very long yet. Say hello. Say hi. Can you take a baby for me, please? You just woke up. Thank you. Oh, my God. Right. That's all right. I handed him off. Okay, so. We've added. We've just got the last of our paint. Make it that little bit thicker. He's already said hello. So. If you add too much, it won't mix. So this is why we decant and just add a little bit at a time and take your time with it. And if it does get too thick, you can add more water. Although if you keep mixing and you of you like I just have, it will actually mix. I had just enough amount of paint. So that was probably almost a 50-50 mix. And you see that's like that. It's thick. It's gonna fall off the spoon, not drop off the spoon. Now you're going to grab your brush with this really thick and goopy mixture. And we're going to add that in anywhere that we want really, really thick texture. And you can keep touching this too. Because we're building texture today, you can keep touching over that paint as it starts to dry and that's how you're going to build up more texture. Just keep getting it. You can see it's not even running off my brush. That's how thick this is. And I'm just doing it in a few spots. I'm not doing it everywhere. And it's just going to add some grit. Just a little bit, not a lot, just a bit. Also just sort of going over this side a little bit because I hadn't really done as much on this side in terms of just blending in some of those brush strokes a little bit. So just anywhere where there's a few, I'm just going to add a bit more there and some more down here and along this base as well. We want a nice really heavily textured base. Spread that bit out a little bit and bring it around here. 
are we? There we go. So we need our, like, there's scrape on the bottom of the barrel now. But we're going to use all of that. So, a little bit more up there. I want more up on this side. I'm liking this bit here. And if it gets a bit much and I don't like it, I can either brush over it now or I can come back and um, sand it. So, and I will lightly sand over this anyway just to smooth it out a little bit. Um, because some of those peaks can be quite sharp and we don't want that. We still want it quite soft. But sometimes it's nice to just have a little bit more. So I'm just really lightly tapping that over. There's just enough on my brush. Anywhere that's still a little bit wet, it's sort of grabbing that. But I'm just really gently tapping it over, more just to hide any brush marks. What? Zombies? Oh no, you better go and protect me. brush but I'm really just looking at adding very slight subtle texture anywhere where I feel like we need careful now anywhere my handles are anywhere where I feel like it's going to be touched a lot that's where we're going to add that little bit more along the base again I want to really chippy, delicious base. And our base will probably end up being quite dark at the end of it as well. Uh, it will look quite grungy. Even though I'm, my, my main colour is going to be that fern, which is quite a bright colour, when it's going to end up really quite dark in some places and really, really grungy and just Oh, we want this to look as authentic as we can. I'm using products like this as a great way of doing that. So I'm just tapping down again, just bringing that texture across, more just to hide any brush marks. you in close again so you can see what we're doing so this is how we're looking so I'll give you a quick little uh, hang on if I put you this side then it's not in the Sun as much sorry Oops. oh no I'm still in my... it's fine darling daddy's there he's got it yeah it's daddy's friend it's fine um, I'm now standing like full Sun sorry <laughs> didn't work as well as what I hoped so again, lots of texture anywhere where I've got things to hide more than anything. And then some places we're just gonna do it like a really light little hat. There's a lot of different ways we could go with this. You could go, you could do this, but then go really light and pretty and floaty, and you could do like pinks and um, purples and that sort of thing. Or you can go greens, like we're going to do. You could even do black and whites. You can really, when you're doing this, yes, darling. No, you can't use that one. There's a piece of furniture on it. You've got your scooter. Oh, I can't, darling. It's too heavy. No, Daddy's busy. 
type person. Come on, I'm doing this video. Don't. Okay, so take your scooter. Daddy's in there too. You'll be fine. Well, go sit down and watch your TV for a minute. Okay, Rosalie. Hey, baby girl. It's not. Sorry, guys. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, Baba. What's the rule when Mummy's doing videos? I know you do, but you can't do it right now. I'm going to go get Oliver in a minute. So I'm just sort of scraping out the rest of my jar now, trying to get what I can on my brush. And again... What is that sound? A truck. Everything's happening today. It's been one of those days. So we're just gonna tap this on. And again, just doing it lightly. Anywhere where I feel like there's a few brush marks. Some areas are heavier, some areas are really flat. today. I've still got some here in my, oops, try not to get it all over my sleeve. I'm just sort of scraping that absolute very last few bits. I'm going to add them to my base more than anything. And bring it up the sides just a little bit, like so. So, let me put these down and I'll bring you in a bit closer for a second so you can have a close-up of what we're working with. So, I'm going to let this dry overnight and then we will come back. Let me pop you off. I'm dropping you. So, we'll, um, I'll come back tomorrow and that's when we'll add our colour and we'll do a live with that as well. And I might even be able to be completely child-free, which will be nice. <laughs> let me turn around. Alright, so here's where we're at. So, it looks blotchy at the moment. More just because the basin block is drying. But we're looking really, really nice. So we've got our heavy texture down the bottom. Coming up, we're a little bit lighter. And then, like in some spots, like the drawers, we've got that little bit more. So I've added a very, very minor texture over our decorative doors. And I've just got a bit here and there. So again, our block is doing its thing. Our primer is doing its thing. It's going to let our silk finish attach. Um, but we've added some extra texture to it, okay? So this isn't changing <clears throat> the formulation as such. It's just changing the thickness of the paint. Um, and it, will still, it still works as a tannin blocker. It still works as our primer. So our silk finish will attach not a problem. Um, if that, if anybody was concerned, but it, this is fine. So we're looking really, really good. So as you can see as well, we've got, can you sort of see there's a few peaks? So when this dries, those peaks, that's such a good photo just there. These peaks will be, um, some of them can be quite sharp. So we will knock them back just a little bit with some sandpaper. We'll just use a really fine, there's some really good ones just there. Really fine sandpaper, just to knock back that texture just a touch. Okay, all right. You're gonna get your hair in the paint and you're also in the video. Can you move please? Okay, I think mum Judy's gone. <laughs> That's the end of my day, but our primer's on. Part one is done. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, so we'll do part two tomorrow and put our colour on. So again, reminder, we're going to be using fern, uh, rainforest. Got some, uh, which one's this? Vineyard. I've got some wilderness, which is this really nice, really dark green. That's an Altenico colour. I've got this custom mix lighter colour if we need it. Um, and when I'm doing a project like this, I just sort of grab everything out. And then we've got some Montmartre. And I love these tubes just for little projects like this and i might only use like a tiny little dot of this but it's a good color to have so that's where we're at part one is done thank you all so much for joining me 
Um, so I will be back tomorrow. We'll do part two. I'll get this video up on our YouTube as well so you can play catch up. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, and we're here 9.30 till 2.30 tomorrow. Have a lovely day. Bye, everyone.